First of all, let me thank the organizers. I think that they made a wonderful job and everybody agrees with that. And also I would like to thank them for the fact that they put my first talk on exactly on the moment when it's the opening of the World Championship in Moscow. And so I'm not obliged to watch this national <laughs> possible catastrophe that would happen in the match of Russia with Saudi Arabia. And um, also I have to thank my um, uh, comrade Pascal Hubert who made the first two lectures and probably already passed through the most difficult part of our course and now gave me an opportunity to speak more about our current stuff in some sense uh, with respect to the classical theories that he already presented. And uh, let me recall a bit what he already told you maybe. So we were discussing interval exchange transformations. So every time we have an interval of a real axis, and this interval is subdivided into a few subintervals in a way that each subinterval has a couple. Uh, there is a piecewise continuous map on it. And uh, in each subinterval, which is an interval of the continuity for this map, it's just a translation, so that the image is again the same interval. OK? Everybody remembers our main protagonist. And uh, Pascal probably put a few restrictions already on this guy. So in, ready, in order to define it, we need to know two things. We need to know all the lengths. And we need to know the order in which they appear on the top and on the bottom in the pre-image and in the image, OK? So this combinatorial part will be coded by permutation. Probably you have already discussed the fact that the permutation is usually supposed to be irreducible in this dynamical sense, in a way that it just does not split into two parts in which dynamics uh, lives independently, because it's not so interesting to analyze the two parts instead of one. So I will always assume that pi is irreducible. And then we mainly care, when we look at this map, we mainly care about orbits of interval exchange transformations. So what is the orbit? We just take some point of our interval and follow all the images that it has under our map. And we would like to know if this orbit, for instance, is everywhere dense or it's supposed to be finite or what happens to it. And in particular, we are interested in minimal interval exchange transformations when all orbits are everywhere dense, yes? So minimality for us, it's a property to have all orbits everywhere dense. And Pascal already explained to you the following thing, that if all lambda i are rationally independent and the pi's are reducible, then the permutation will be, uh, sorry, then the interval exchange transformation will be minimal. Did it happen that he explained that? Perfect. So this is a, almost a theorem proved by uh, Michael Keane in 1975. His theorem was slightly stronger, but I don't want to concentrate on that, and I will call this condition Keane's condition. It's a bit of a simplification. So this is uh, named after Michael Keane. And uh, in reality, Keen wanted a slightly different thing. He wanted that no singular points would meet at the same orbit. But uh, the condition that our lengths are rationally independent is uh, sufficient for Keen's condition. So we can, we'll call the Keen's condition just this uh, more simple version, more strong version that they are really rationally independent. However, Keen's condition is a sufficient condition, but it's not a criterion. And the question, either the interval exchange transformation is minimal or not, if Keen's condition is not satisfied, is a very interesting question, which is, in some sense, open right now. So if we know that condition is satisfied, we know that interval exchange transformation is minimal. If it is not satisfied, it's a complicated question to understand either this interaction transformation is minimal or not. It strongly depends on the type of conditions that we put on it. 
I will provide just a few examples to show you that indeed things can be quite non-trivial. So let us consider the situation when the permutation is like that. 2, 4, 3, 1. And we would like the first person to be equal to the last one. And uh, from the third, we just want it to be not equal to 0. And uh, then we can look at the um, uh, following interaction transformation. And it's quite easy to see that this one is not minimal. So this t is not minimal. Because it has plenty, plenty of fixed points. So if you look at any point between the second and the third singularity, so I will call x1 is equal to lambda 1, x2 is the sum of lambda 1 plus lambda 2, etc. So if you look at the subinterval between x2 and x3, then you can check that our points are just fixed by this map. So it's not at all minimal. Even if the permutation, as you see, is not reducible. So we are already in troubles. So it easily can be non-minimal. At the same time, I will provide another example to show you that it's not true that if Kin's condition is not satisfied, then necessarily we have a problem. So we take the following permutation again on four intervals, 4, 3, 2, 1. And our uh, vector of length looks as follows, lambda, two, uh, lambda 1, lambda 2, again lambda 1, lambda 2. So lambda 3 is equal to lambda 1, lambda 4 is equal to lambda 2. And uh, we would like them to be incommensurable. And in this case, it's uh, quite easy again to see that our t is minimal. Naturally, you can construct much more complicated examples, but I showed these two that are very simple, just to convince you that indeed it's a very non-trivial question. How to deal with interval exchange transformations if Kin's condition is not satisfied? The technical reason for our difficulties comes mainly from the fact that we are used to apply the Rose induction once we need to understand the ergodic properties of interval exchange transformations. But if you have some rational relationships between the length of your intervals, then the Rossi induction is not very informative because you will arrive to the moment when it does not know what to do. Since you have two people of the same length and you don't know who is supposed to be subtract from whom. So in this case, you are supposed to find something different from the standard um, interpretation of the Rossi induction. Then you can pose me a natural question. Why do we care about this type of interval exchange transformations? Maybe it's enough to consider uh, good ones, that one that satisfy Keynes condition. They are very numerous. It's uh, easy to understand that they fill a Lebesgue measure one set. So maybe it's enough. And apparently, it's not enough. And our course was announced to be dedicated to the family of interval exchange transformations. That is interesting for many different reasons that I will advertise in my part of the course, just a second. Uh, they will be named in honor of uh, Pierre Arnoux and Gérard Rosy. And uh, they exactly represent this problematic family of internal exchange transformations. They will not satisfy Keynes' condition. Yes? Yeah, so we don't know, uh, I don't know what, what is that condition. So there's that the uh, lengths are rationally incommensurable. Lengths are rationally incommensurable, so they are rationally independent. Oh, thank you. Okay. So uh, King's original condition was slightly different, as I said, but for us, we will concentrate just on this case. Any? Yes, yes. They are normalized to one, and this is the only thing that we load here, I think. But uh, this is the only restriction we have. In any other sense, we would like them to be rationally independent. OK, so now it's. Yes? Uh, I just uh, introduced a new notation. So I would like to call the x uh, with the index of singularities and the order that they appear on the interval. So x3 is. Lambda two plus lambda, uh, lambda one plus lambda two plus lambda three. So if you are between the second and the third singularity on the top level, then you will have this property. 
Mm, you would like me to draw a picture? I'd like you to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, no, the, the, the permutation is irreducible. It was uh, an important condition, but uh, if you want, we can try to check what happens. Just a second. So this guy sits here. And Well, this third person, it just stays on a place. I mean, it, it does not move, this guy. So it's easy to see that you will have indeed some finite orbits, yeah? Because these two people, they coincide due to our conditions, so th this each person that lives on the third interval will not travel at all. And uh, then the So this is one, two, three, four. And then this two, four, three, one. The x one is him. X two is him. X three is him. Him is x two. Him is x three. Okay. So now let me. Uh, uh, you are right, you are right, I, I'm sorry. X1 is here and X2 is here. I'm a bit too fast. Thanks. I forgot what happens at the vertices of this map. So when you say all of its identities, does it include the vertices or not? Well, uh, usually I think we consider them in this way, that the left one is included and the right one is excluded and is uh, included in the next, per, uh, in the next interval. So the, the left uh, point is uh, included, the left end, and the right point is not included. And then with this dimension, you still ask that all of its are dense. Uh, yes. OK, thank you. okay so uh, let me say maybe one more w b Before I introduce our Nurazi family, I will say one more word about a certain variant. So. First, I will pr provide some families for the abbreviation. Sa, Arnoux, Pati. From what I understand, Sa was independent, and Arnoux and Fati worked together. And they produced an invariant for interval exchange transformations that is defined in the following way. So this Sa of T is a sum of external products of lambda i and t i, where lambda i are just length, and t i's are translations. What do I mean by translations? Well, when we consider the interval and interval exchange transformation, uh, due to uh, when we apply our map, it is translated. So the length of the interval on which it was translated is a translation. And uh, so it's this uh, invariant leaves here. And uh, just to make it more understandable, let me calculate it for the rotation. Then I will explain what does it mean to be invariant and why do people care about this thing. So the rotation, it's very simple. Sum of this R alpha is uh, 1 over alpha. So it's equal to 0 if and only if alpha is rational. And indeed, what one would expect, that dynamics is pretty much different. If it's SAF vanishes only when we have finite orbits, and when SAF is uh, different from zero, then it means that all our orbits are everywhere dense. So why they introduced such an invariant, and w first, why it is invariant? You can think about it that it's invariant when you apply the Rose induction, if you are allowed to do so. So if you take some interval exchange transformation, apply it with the Rose induction, and compare the value of SAF invariant for these two guys, then you will easily see. It's a very simple exercise. I just gave it to my undergrad student <laughs> two weeks ago in the project, that indeed it will be invariant. And moreover, you can ask me what happens if 
They are not allowed to apply the ROSI induction like Keynes condition is not satisfied and we don't know what to do, then you can just check that if you consider whatever first return map on a subinterval of your original interval, and then it will be another interval again, this is uh, quite easy to understand. In such a case, you will check that SAF invariant is uh, equal again to the SAF invariant that we had for the original interval exchange transformation. So any induced interval exchange transformation has the same SAF invariant as the original one. I'm not going to check it right now, but it's a very easy computation. Yes? Can you explain again what the TI are? Sorry? Uh, TI is a translation. So each interval is translated on some distance, each interval of continuity. This distance for each of them, uh, it's different distance, and it's denoted by TI. So it's a sum of some lambda i, and then you can decide well, how do you measure it with, uh, in with which side. Yes? Sorry, I, I missed. What, what, so T is the IET, right? T is the <coughs> exchange map, and what is that, that, that symbol mean? Which symbol? This one? Uh, Yes, no, no, that symbol and the, the, the other symbol. I mean, this one, it's a rotation. No, no, it's the, Q. the, the that, that, that This one? Yeah, it's Q, one. It's a ra you, you take the external product over rational numbers. Oh, okay. Yes. And does that understand better? So, for example, in that case, uh, if I want to see T1 for the first interval, is it just lambda 2 plus lambda 3? Well, let, uh, for this example? Well, uh, you will translate it on the sum of lambda 2, lambda 3, and lambda 4, because here you were on 0, and there you traveled on the sum of three, of three others. So it's a sum of three of them. Sorry, could you please? Yes. Why is it 0? Uh, well, it's not necessarily 0, but it will be 0 only if alpha is rational. Well, you can put it as minus alpha. That, I mean, it, it's a question of convention. How do you calculate the translation? If you can think that you are on, on the circle, then it does not matter in which direction you go. No, but it's a kind of it's a rotation, so I assume that I live on the circle right now. So oh. okay. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here, yeah, because I said, let's check what happens with for rotation, if we can do the same, the same thing. Yes, of course, that's what basically we did. But the only question is, how do we calculate the translation? If it matters in which direction did we go, or we can think that it's just the sum of uh, others, you understand? Like here, if we think that we went necessarily <coughs> to the right, or we think that we went to the left on minus lambda 1. So on the circle, it's not uh, distinguished, while uh, if you leave at the interval, it can be distinguished. either calculation you do, either interval or circle, you get the same answer. I will have the same answer, but just uh, the formula is, looks uh, slightly <laughs> nicer. So this is two homework exercises for us. Uh, OK, OK, yes, OK. So in any case, uh, once people understood that, the, why did uh, Arnoux, Fatih, and Sa introduce that? In reality, they were not thinking about minimality and orbit behavior and so on and so forth. They were more interested in algebra. It's quite easy to check that interval exchange transformations, they form a group, and they would like to, and they wanted to understand the um, algebraic structure, and they consider it as a homeomorphism from the group of integral exchange transformations to this set. But I completely ignore this. I look on a byproduct of their activity. So once we see that SAF is zero for rotation, if and only if uh, the angle was rational, then it's quite natural to ask yourself, maybe it's a way to detect interval exchange transformations that are minimal. Maybe if we take whatever interval exchange transformation, we will have the same cool thing, that SAF vanishes if and only if interval exchange transformation is not minimal. It's obvious that if uh, uh, our lambda are rationally independent, since translations are just uh, some combina linear combination of the original lambdas, then it's quite obvious that if lambdas were rationally independent, then SAF will be different from zero. So uh, SAF can, be, can vanish only if Keynes condition is not satisfied. OK, this is just another argument uh, to 
check more precisely. Maybe it's a very nice way to test interval change transformations. And what I said before is not so, so complicated. Maybe I was just wrong. So Pierre Arnoux did the exercise. Because he was smarter than we are, so he understood immediately that it's very promising person. Of course, he started with examples. And he took first the interval exchange transformations that correspond to the foliations on the surfaces of genus 1, which means that we have three or four intervals. And he made the calculation, and he was able to show that indeed stuff vanishes on this case, in this case only if and only if interval exchange transformation is not minimal. So uh, Pascal explained from what I understood the, the way how do you construct the translation surface and associate it with the interval exchange transformation. So I can say that genus is equal to 1. And you <coughs> understand what do I mean for interval exchange transformation. So in this case, SAF vanishes if and only if interval exchange transformation is not minimal. So it was a time to pose a conjecture. OK, we are already on a good road. We are almost able to find a really very informative invariant. However, Pierre Arnoux by himself, in a collaboration with Jean-Christophe Yacos, was able to construct a counterexample to this uh, hypothesis. And uh, the most famous representative of the family I'm interested in is named after Pierre Arnoux and Jean-Christophe Yacos. And it was interval exchange transformation on the, uh, that corresponded to the case of genus 3, uh, where SAF vanishes, but interval exchange transformations are still minimal. So I will provide a pre explicit construction in a second. Uh, OK. So what did they have? They took a circle Sorry. instead of. Yeah, what about genus two? Uh, with genus two, it's a more complicated question. I will explain later. But uh, examples exist. The conjecture is wrong for genus two as well. But they are much more tricky with respect to Arnoux Yukos example. So uh, Arnoux Yukos. I think it's a paper from 1981. And so we, the, the construction is as follows. We take a circle, and we divide it into three parts. And uh, these three parts have to be chosen in a kind of a smart way. I will take alpha such that uh, alpha plus alpha square plus alpha cube is equal to 1. So I will divide my circle into two parts, uh, into three parts. Sorry, one will have length alpha. This will be the guy of the length alpha, and I will call it A1. Then there will be a guy of the length alpha squared, and this will be E2. And then there will be a guy of the length alpha cube. And, uh, alpha two, and it will be E3. And then I do the following thing. I divide each interval I took into two parts. Then I rotate the whole picture on pi and switch to halves. So how it will look like. I still have the circle. So this point is supposed to go somewhere here. And this point is supposed to go somewhere here. Yes, I still want it to be more than one half, something like that. So this is where my E1 goes. But here I would divide him into two parts. So this is the part number one, and this is the part number two. And uh, the part number one went into. Uh, anti-clockwise direction, so 
the, I will divide this image also into two parts, but now they will follow each other in a clockwise direction. In the same way, I will do the exercise with E2. E2. Well, I'm wrong. Sorry. I, I, my E3 will be here. Here will be E3. And here will be E2. And then I switch halves on each part. So if here I had one, two, then three, four, now I switched. So it will be four four will go first and then this three will go later so it will be four three and uh, on the last part there will be five six and so here also I have to switch them and uh, six five and then for this will be five and six okay So it's an interval exchange transformation, but uh, it's uh, defined on a circle, not on the interval, but I hope it's not a problem for you. You can just cut the circle at some point, and you will have interval exchange transformation, but on seven intervals. So the description will be slightly more ugly, and I prefer this version. Can you say again where these points are? Uh, so what I did, let me write. Uh, first, it was a. Just indicate on the second circle where are the points are. Yes, so I would like to, maybe here it's a bit more accurate. So what I did, I tried to make a notation. So these two points, they are, this guy is E1 now. It's an image of E1. So let me maybe number the point, maybe point R and A prime. And so this will be F of R and F of A prime, something like that. And then in the same way, it was uh, B. This guy was B. So now we, it went uh, like uh, somewhere here. <coughs> and it would be F of B. And so this is E2, and him is E3. And then we switch each two, each halves. We, each, we divide each person into two halves, and we switch them. So I will write what I did. I made pi rotation. And I made three involutions. Switching to half. So uh, what is important? Why do we know that this guy is minimal? The reason is as follows, that you can consider this interval from uh, A to A prime. And you can consider the first return map on it. And the first return map on it is apparently the interval exchange transformation. If you identify these two points and consider it again as a, a map on the circle, you will get again interval exchange transformation of the same type, of arnouille cost type. And uh, you can calculate the length of each interval. And due to this condition, which is called Tribonacci condition, you will have a scaled down version of the original system. I will write it down to make it more understandable. So lemma. The first return map. On I1. I do not write it here, but you understand I made a point identific identification in order to have a first return map on a circle again, and not on the interval. Is again is a scaled down version of the original Arnoukos interval exchange transformation. Uh, I can prove, if you want, that it's the case, or we can delay the proof, because later I will generalize this construction, and the proof will be completely the same. So maybe it's easier if I will delay it slightly. Uh, why it is very cool, then? 
Because as we know that if it was a first return map on the subinterval of the original interval, then of course all the orbit properties of this new person should coincide with the orbit properties of the original one, yes? So it means that you can induce and induce this procedure and uh, at some point you will arrive to arbitrary small support interval which means that the original system definitely was minimal because you could arrive to whatever small uh, uh, neighborhood of any point so you, will ha you would have all the orbits uh, everywhere dense so the fact that it's minimal it's more or less obvious from this property do you agree with that? that if your uh, interval exchange transformation had the following property that the induced interval exchange transformation was a scaled down version of it then necessarily your interval exchange transformation was minimal and moreover it was uniquely ergodic so Arnoux you cost interval exchange transformation it's a corollary slam transformation is minimal and moreover it is uniquely ergodic I think Pascal didn't pronounce these words but other people already did I heard yesterday yes Yes, that's what I wanted to say, that okay. other people already said some, pronounced these words, Pseudonosov, I heard it twice. So I think that uh, I have a right to say now that uh, if you consider the uh, suspension of this internal exchange transformation, I mean, you built a, a surface and define a foliation and so on, then you will have the Pseudonosov diffeomorphism on this uh, uh, surface and moreover, I can even calculate precisely the dilatation coefficient for this pseudonosov uh, diffeomorphism. I can say that it will be 1 over alpha. So our guy is a pseudonosov, and it's one of the main reasons why it is uniquely ergodic, is that uh, all pseudonosov uh, interval exchange transformations have these properties, and uh, Arnoux Yukos is not an exception. It's important because later I will discuss uh, people that look very similar from combinatorial point of view, but they will not be any more pseudonosov, and uh, the question about the number of invariant measures will be much more non-trivial. So uh, this uh, person, Arnoux Yukos, uh, interval exchange transformation or diffeomorphism, as you prefer, because I have to admit that in this paper, they were not working with interval exchange transformations. They really had a foliation on a surface. And uh, it was a later construction when uh, interval exchange transformation of this uh, appearance was found. It is very widely studied. And it's a very important example for many reasons. Ma many of them, they come from the fact that stuff invariant vanishes. For instance, uh, it is, self invariant is not the only thing that vanishes, but uh, also, I don't know, Galois flux and so on. So plenty of people, including Jean-Christophe himself and Kurt McMullen and others, they exploited this example. And uh, for what I will say tomorrow, he will also play a very crucial role somehow. But uh, quite fast, Pierre Arnaud understood that he can generalize this construction. It's not necess necessary always to work only with Tribonacci sequence. And the generalization is as follows. We will do absolutely the same thing. So just all the combinatorics will be preserved. But let me remove alphas from here, because I don't want them to be any more Tribonacci numbers. I will put lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. And I will do absolutely the same, divide things into two equal halves, switch them, etc. But the only difference will be as follows. My lambdas, they will be quite uh, random. I will not uh, force them to be Tribonacci anymore. But in order to have the same property, I need that my E1, the, uh, on the interval on which we would like to consider the first return map, is long enough. I want lambda 1 to be longer than lambda 2 plus lambda 3. And if I do that, the construction 
is already named after different people. Uh, Pierre Arnoux preserved, he was an invariant, but uh, Razi added. So we will have Arnoux Razi interval exchange transformation. So the picture with the circle is absolutely the same. I already was not very successful to draw the first one. I don't want to repeat it. And uh, uh, combinatorics completely, absolutely preserves. And the difference is that we don't want these lambdas to be Tribonacci anymore. We allow them to be some arbitrary numbers. Just we would like this inequality to be hold because we want our lemma to be uh, true, so it's quite important for us in order to preserve these combinatorics that uh, the uh, interval is long enough. But then, yes? Uh, does the lemma contain something on the uh, symbolic? Yes, I will say it now. Yes, it will be translated. Uh, there is just one problem about this uh, application of this lemma. Because here, what I said, that it was a scaled down version of the original one. For Arnoux Razi, it will not be really true. It will not be the scaled down version. Their theorem is different. It's again Arnoux Razi. I think it's 1981, maybe. It's very similar years when Pierre was working with different people on it. So in any case, uh, this theorem says that just the first return map on it. First return map map on A1 is again Arnoux Razi interval exchange transformation. But the lengths are different. So the new lengths are as follows. Our lambda 1 will be calculated as lambda 1 minus lambda 2 minus lambda 3. And lambda 2 and lambda 3, they preserve. So it's not anymore the scaled down version as it was for uh, Arnoux Yukos. It's a slightly more complicated thing. Yes? So does that inequality doesn't necessarily hold anymore? Uh, well, exactly this is a problem that. Uh, if we apply it, we could get something for which we cannot uh, iterate the same procedure. We could get a situation when this inequality does not hold anymore. And even if we change their roles, it does not hold. I mean, here I assume that lambda 1 is the largest. But maybe now it's not the largest, but somebody else is the largest. But if the inequality does not hold for anybody, then we are in troubles. And uh, uh, you can check that. In such a case, you will have non-minimal system. So we have minimal Arnoux Razi interval exchange transformations if and only if every time we apply this uh, in procedure, uh, in triangle inequality holds for this triple. It does not necessarily mean that it holds for the triple in this way that lambda 1 is the largest again. But for the large, uh, we change their role maybe. But if the triple inequality does not hold at some point, then it means that Arnoux Razi interval exchange transformation is not minimal. So now it's time for me to introduce my main uh, object that was advertised also in the title, the Razi gasket. But uh, before I do that, I will answer the question that was posed before about the symbolic dynamics. Because maybe some people here, just uh, I will finish the phrase, already heard the combination of names, Arnoux and Razi, together in a con connection with um, Arnoux Razi words. And uh, even if not, it deserves to be advertised. So I will say a few words about the symbolic dynamics associated with interval exchange transformations from this family. And then I switch to the um, uh, Razi gasket and explain how to deal with them, how to check when they are minimal or not. Yes? Mm -hmm. Are they rationally independent, and what is the SFT invariant? Uh, no, they are not rationally independent, uh, because uh, obviously they are not, because you have an interval exchange transformation on six intervals, and two of them, uh, like you have three couples of equal intervals. 
Because what I did, I, I divided it into three parts. I mean, lambdas, they are rationally independent. But then the lengths of the intervals of interaction transformations, they are not. Because I divided the, each interval into two parts, two equal parts, and then I switched them. So what I said that if I will draw a picture of interval exchange transformation, I will have conditions like lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, lambda 3 is equal to lambda 4, lambda 5 is equal to lambda 6. So Kin's condition is not satisfied. Sub uh, uh, is equal to 0 for them. It's not hard to compute exactly because uh, we did it in a very special way. So why I said that it's a counterexample to this uh, hypothesis that at some point Pierre had, that uh, for, those guys? for those as well, yes. No condition on the lambda. Uh, no, no. For uh, if you can uh, assume that lambda is um, larger than lambda two plus lambda three, actually without any condition, stuff would be equal to zero. But then if you have this condition, you can prove that it can be minimal. So, but even without this condition, stuff would be equal to zero. You can calculate it uh, directly because uh, you can calculate all the translations. And they have very strong dependence with each other. And it's not a uh, very hard exercise to check this. So uh, exactly I was talking about SAF in order to illustrate that Arnaud Razi, they are useful for the community, at least in these things, that we can uh, apply them to show that SAF is not an indicator of the minimality, as people hoped at the very beginning. So now let me say a few words about symbolic dynamics because um, uh, it is uh, nice and important and it also has some implications for the future. So um, let us do the following thing. Let us code the orbits of interval exchange transformations. But we need, in order to provide a coding, we need to introduce an alphabet. So our, our alphabet will be very simple. We will say, ma label our uh, intervals by 1, 2, and 3, depending if we live on E1, E2, or E3. And we will not distinguish these two halves that we switch in this way. So apparently, you can check that. What we did uh, correspond to the following substitution, to the application of the following substitution. So this is a standard substitution. And what we have is the following thing. That here is an application of uh, Arnurazi. And uh, here uh, there are sequences that are constructed, built with one, two, three. And uh, this is a coding. And this is our substitution. And uh, so coding, I, this is a coding map. This is our substitution. And uh, this is a um, commutative diagram, as we like. So this is a connection with the uh, coding. And um, so see, we will cut the coding. And uh, it's onto, <coughs> except for a countable set. So mm, what is easy to check is that this sigma, which is an uh, application on the uh, sequences, uh, so, sorry, application it comes from French, because it's a map on the sequences. And uh, it's contractive in a standard uh, metric. So it will have a fixed point, uh, only one. And uh, this uh, fixed point uh, will exactly provide us a trajectory that corresponds to the um, orbit we have. And uh, words that are built using this substitution, they are called the Arnurazi words. And they are very famous in symbolic dynamics. Arnurazi words. So symbolic coding for our orbits, for those who are not familiar with symbolic dynamics, you can just think about it as a symbolic coding for the orbits of our internal exchange transformations. They are particularly advertised in uh, symbolic dynamics. Why they are famous? The reason comes from the following fact. You know that in symbolic dynamics, what usually people have? They have an alphabet, and they have words. So do you understand what the word is? Should I explain? 
So we assume that we follow the trajectory of our dynamical system and write the corresponding letter every time. And uh, if we made n steps of this uh, trajectory, then we get a word of the length n. So people are interested uh, to calculate the asymptotics of a factors of the word of length n. By factor, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean. So why do you put an S if you say that there's only one fixed point? Well, sigma is contractive. I mean, it's so the. No, but how many fixed points are there? Sure one, 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 one is a fixed point, and two, one, 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 one. Yeah, the definition of sigma is. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, okay, just a second. Let me. Okay, this is. Uh, uh, let me finish the previous phrase, and then I will go back to that, because it's not very. I think it's not so much. Mm, well, sigma is onto if you exclude uh, uh, it's an application from matrix. Uh, yeah, just a second, let me think for a moment. OK, uh, just let me explain first why do we care about these words, and then we go back to the technical part. But so the question was what other is left? Hmm? Uh, OK, so, so you have, uh, in any case, in symbolic dynamics, you have a finite alphabet. And you can write up the words depending on the, f f say here you would follow the trajectory of your internal exchange transformation. And you consider all the words of length n. And uh, a standard question in symbolic dynamics is as follows. So how many factors the word of length n can have? When I say factors, I mean subwords that can appear inside of this word. And uh, this uh, number, it's called complexity. So complexity. So why is it not the number of zeta? Well, because you, you, it's much more. Because you consider all the subwords that appear. So like if you, have, even if you have two letters, you already could have like 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2 in general. You can construct much more words than. Uh, No, no, it depends on, on the language that you have. So it depends on the word, basically. You can fix a particular word. So you have one, two, three, there are letters. So now I consider the word one, two. So in it, I will have two subwords, like one and two. But if I would consider the word that would be of the same length, but it just contains like one, one, then I will have only one subword, which is one. So it can be different. And uh, for each word, you can calculate this number, how many subwords does it have. And then you can ask about the asymptotics of this uh, amount of, uh, it's a number. So of not all words in multi are allowed? Hmm? Not all words in one, two, and three are allowed? Uh, well, in general, uh, for so it no, 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 but say for each word, you can calculate this. Then if I will consider only Arnur Razi words, since I, I build them in accordance with some particular rule, that every time in order to extend, I take one and substitute it by one, or if I see two, I will substitute it by two, one, then not where whatever start, word. From where do we start? Like we can start from one, say, but, uh, from uh, whatever, from all three points. But then we, the words we will get, they are not whatever words, yes? The words of length 2, we will get only people from this le length. For instance, 2, 2, we will not obtain. Then when you extend, you will again get some words of very special appearance, not everybody. So these are a number of factors for words of length n. So, uh, if you consider, for instance, the condition that your complexity should be equal to uh, p n uh, should be equal to n plus one, then you will get very and you will ask yourself for wh which type of words it is true. So if p n is equal just to n plus one, and you will ask yourself for how many words, uh, how many letters I can have, and uh, what type of words I would get, then. It 
quite obvious that you can have you cannot have many letters because uh, your uh, complexity grows too slow because every time you can extend it only like in one way so you are not supposed to have more than two letters somehow and uh, it's quite easy to see that you will uh, once you fix this condition you will fix very precisely the corresponding permutation on these two letters and what you will get is the so-called Fibonacci sequence and uh, it corresponds to the object which is called the Sturmian words. And the Agnurazi words, they are kind of the most simple after this uh, standard example because uh, their complexity, I did not prove that, but it's true, their complexity of Agnurazi words is equal to 2n plus 1. So if you have three letters, you cannot have uh, less somehow. So they are as simple as possible in the sense of this complexity. So that's why when people understood that actually Agnurazi words can be represented by interval exchange transformation, I will proceed with the correction. Maybe to that I will recheck. But once they understood that such a thing with so little complexity can be presented in a world of interval exchange transformations, they became already very excited because in symbolic dynamics, they already cared about this kind of things a lot. So let me check for a second if I'm right or not. So for our new cause, the... the Well, what you will get is that you will get, you, 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 you can check that you can get uh, all the situations when each number appears infinite number of times. Just a second, maybe. I think it's Arnu you cause what you are saying, because for Arnu you cause, second, I will recheck. Let me do the example of Arnu you cause, and yes, to understand also better. To, to be sure that I'm not uh, bullshit in just a second. Uh, so what does, does he say? So you will have this. Maybe provide an example. So uh, we have one, two, three again. And we have one can go to one, two. That was the two to one, three. Uh, two will go to one, three. And uh, uh, three uh, will uh, go to uh, just uh, let me see. Uh, three had to go to one because it's, uh, there was no other way where it could appear. Yes. So this is a representation of this uh, Arnu Yikos example, I think. And um, so then you can consider the fixed point of this uh, person. What kind of things you will have? Like you will have one, two. Then uh, you have to add like one, three, one, two, etc. And uh, yes, so. Uh, I think for Arnu Yikos, the substitution will be like that. And uh, it exactly corresponds to this first return method. Okay, so in any case, uh, what I just wanted to advertise, I don't want to go very deep to symbolic dynamics because I'm a bit uh, lack of time, but I just wanted to convince you that from the point of view of symbolic dynamics, if we use this coding, our internal exchange transformation are as simple as they could be. So it's the most simple object. And in particular, we have this um, commutative diagram which basically tells us that up to some uh, level, we can uh, substitute the analysis of our internal exchange transformation dynamics by the analysis of um, the dynamics of the corresponding shift, but uh, what, what would be the benefit? We would really like to think uh, that, for instance, the number of invariant measures should coincide. And there is a very famous and important theorem uh, proved by Boschernitsan in 1984, which connects the 1984 
which connects the complexity notion with the number of invariant measures. So in particular, Boschernik-San said that if you consider this number, the asymptotics of this number, and it's strictly less than 3, then your, si your um, shift, this uh, dynamical system, symbolic dynamical system, is uh, uniquely ergodic. So there is a very strong temptation to think that then all agnur interval exchange transformations are supposed to be uniquely ergodic because this holds. It was proved by Agnur and Razi. And so we are supposed to have a uniquely ergodic agnur words. And then probably the original agnur interval exchange transformations are uniquely ergodic. But in reality, this is not true. And uh, this is a great surprise that I will discuss maybe tomorrow more in details. But uh, the main purpose of um, my activity will be to understand the dynamics of arnur Z internal exchange transformations. Some uh, facts can be taken from the, this nice observation made already by Arnur and Razi that you can sometimes analyze arnur Z words instead of original system, but not for every question. Yes? Well, I mean that Arnur as he works, they would be, uh, you, you mean in Bashar Nitsan theorem? You, you, you just define any symbolic dynamical system and you calculate the, the complexity and uh, if it's not very complex in this sense, then it, you will be, it will be uniquely ergodic. Then which measure it will be, it depends on the system. But uh, in general, uh, Bashar Nitsan, he even is able to provide a boundary, how many invariant measures you will have for more complex systems. I think it was also improved by Thierry Monte, this boundary. But for this uh, version, if it's not complex, the complexity is low, it's enough to know this. OK, so now let me go back. Sorry. Yes. Sorry? Well, you need this. You, you want to look at the asymptotics. So uh, once, uh, hmm? uh, can, can you just explain why it's, it's true that the complexity is equal to two n plus one? Well, it's not fast, honestly. It's a kind of a theory by Arnaud and Razi. I will explain you, but maybe later because. <laughs> it's it's from, like, uh, the structure of the yes. Well, uh, it, it 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 can be proved in a similar way as you show for Sturmian words that the complexity is n plus one when you apply this Hedlund Morse theorem. But it's slightly more <coughs> complicated because uh, there, is a mo there are more variants here. So you need to analyze it more precisely. Okay, and when you define complexity, it's for every word that appears as a coding? Yes. So you, you apply this uh, sigma, so you, you count only Arnur Razi words, and you analyze only their complexity. So you fix a, a word, and you analyze the complexity of one word? Uh, yes, you, you, you fix the rule. How do you produce this word? And then you analyze the complexity of all the words of the fixed length. Then you can have different words because you can substitute, for instance, in order to go from n to n plus 1, you can substitute not necessarily the rightmost element, but also the leftmost or the one in the middle. So you will have many words. But uh, it, I claim that there are not so many variants somehow, so their variety is quite limited. Because uh, what does it mean to be Arnur Razi word in general? It means that you have only one uh, left and only one right factor. So the way how you can extend it to the left or to the right is in reality quite fixed, or they will coincide with each other. So the, the, the symbolic dynamics is very special. In any case, that is the main message of this part. Yeah. Piece of AR is what uh, this is Arnur Razi interval exchange transformations. So this one on the circle on the six intervals. And then sigma is the substitution? Or sigma is a substitution, yes. The substitution? Is that right? Yes. And so you're saying that diagram to you? Uh, sorry? I'm saying that? Oh, oh. I will say that, that this diagram is commutative, yes. Uh, but the, the coding is a map onto. Uh, Uh, yes. Well, 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 what I was saying is just that 
if you have Arnurazi uh, internal transformation, you can code the orbits. But uh, what you will have as a symbolic dynamics, it will be something that was given by this substitution. For Arnu, you code, the substitution was slightly different, but uh, that was the only difference because uh, for um, Arnu, you code is a part of this family in some sense, but for Arnu, you code, you consider the, uh, this first return map um, kind of, how to say it, what is the difference between Arnu Razi and Arnu you code in a simple way? Arnu Razi is more general, and Arnu you code is a particular representative. But you're getting the same substitution for any. Uh, the substitution. Uh, the substitution is slightly different for Arnu Razi, but uh, it will provide an, uh, the substitution that was given Arnu Yukos still gives you the, it, it was there, it was a different. So what you were describing here, the Arnu <laughs> yeah, there I was describing Arnu Yukos, and here it was general Arnu Razi, there were two different substitutions, but it would be the same property of the complexity and so on. Uh, Do you understand correctly that the Arnu Razi is not self-similar? No, they are not self-similar. They're not necessarily self-similar. So they can be. They, they, they cannot be given by one substitution. They must be. They will be a family that. Uh, there will be a static existence of substitution. Uh, uh, yes. That's probably unfair. So yes, yes, that's what. Yeah, for Arnu Razi, it will be two substitutions, and for Arnu Yukos, it's just one, because Arnu Yukos is, is self-similar. So it's really you just uh, commonly do. For Arnur Yukos, you had just one substitution, and for Arnur Razi, you have to consider two, the one that I wrote for Arnur Yukos, and that one, and you will combine them and so on. I'm just asking because they weren't getting erased. Sasha is running the time. Maybe we can postpone this. Well, let me just define the, the Rosy gasket very fast to explain who it is, and then I will stop uh, here for tomorrow. So uh, let me go back. Just forget for a second about the symbolic dynamical part. And let me go back to this definition of the Arnurazi interval exchange transformations, where I claimed that uh, the first return map to, uh, on this uh, E1 is uh, again the Arnurazi interval exchange transformation with the following length of intervals. So there will be a matrix that looks like that, up to the order of the uh, lines. And uh, uh, so how do the um, Razi gasket appear? Why do we have a fractal set on which Arnur Razi interval exchange transformations are minimal? The reason is very simple. So let me consider the uh, normaliz normalization. So I assume that the sum of three legs is equal to one. So if with the, uh, the inequality, triangle inequality was not satisfied for this lambda i, then I have to remove this part, and I'm, I know that Arnur Razi interval exchange transformation is not minimal. So I ignore this triangle in the middle. Then I made one step in accordance with this theorem. For the rest, I could do it. And then I, why there are three parts? Because maybe not lambda 1 was the largest, but lambda 2 or lambda 3. So I got these three pieces. And I ask myself again if I'm allowed to make the next step or not. And if I'm not allowed, I have to remove part from it. And uh, this part will go away. Otherwise, if I can iterate, I will continue. So I will get uh, kind of a fractal set. And this fractal set uh, looks pretty much like as a Sierpinski carpet, Sierpinski triangle. But I will explain you tomorrow that in reality, it's not him. Still, uh, the interesting dynamics lives on the attractor of this kind of guy. And uh, I want to understand the Lebeck measure for this attractor. I would like to know this house, his house of dimension. And uh, if Lebeck measure is too small, I would like to define an invariant measure on it in order to be able to treat Arnur Razi interval exchange transformations as normal one. So what we did today, we defined a special family of them such that I do not have Razi induction for these people, because still Razi induction would stop since we have too many rational relationships among our lengths. But I have some kind of induced map that can, in some sense, substitute the Razi induction for me, for my purposes. And this map is defined only on this uh, particular subset that I need to understand better in order to be able to say something smart about Arnur Razi interval exchange transformations. Apparently, 
this person was named by uh, Pierre Arnoux in honor of uh, Gérard Razzi. He was described by words already in the paper by Arnoux and Razzi, but his picture did not appear in this paper. So the first time when this guy got a picture, it was a paper by uh, Gilbert Lévy in uh, 1999. And Gilbert Levitt was studying an absolutely different object that came from geometry group theory. I do not explain now what was going on. I will explain it next time, but it's just funny that his motivation to study this guy came from geometry group theory. Then, much later, in 2008, Ivan Dinnikov and Roberto De Leo were working on uh, Novikov's problem that I will also hopefully explain next time, but uh, at least we put it in the title, so I needed to mention it at least once. So this is this time that I have to mention. They were working with Novikov's problem, and they found this guy again. And uh, then in 2013, or 11, but the paper appeared in 2013, Pierre Arnoux was working exactly with the symbolic dynamics, complexity, Sturmian, Episturmian words, etc., etc., and he met the same person again. And he recognized him and named him in honor of Razi. And then uh, Pascal Hubert, uh, Arthur Avila, and myself met this guy one more time, working with a different object I will present next time, and rediscovered it on the first time. But finally, uh, this uh, Levit and Arnoux, they were writing too much in French. Dinikov and Dileo did not speak French. But finally, we all met, knew enough languages, and understood that it's always the same person. And so we were able to analyze so properly his dynamics, metric properties, and uh, say something about ergodic properties of Arnold Razi interval exchange transformations. And it will be the plot for my talk tomorrow. Thanks for